the frig is going the frig on. On. What's going on? The frig is up. <laughs> uh, I just want to remind everybody that my friend from Minnesota, Minnesota, my friend from Minnesota, e uh radio show is this Friday. It's called e Locked and Loaded. And it's, you know, it's blog TV. It's pretty cool. Just sit around talking about, uh, you know, what's going on with gun laws and uh, all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, I'll probably be calling in sometime Friday night. I don't know when. Uh, I'll have to call him. Ask him what a good time is. If the flyers are on, Eric, I ain't calling in. Kiss my ass. No, I'll probably call in for a little bit. So... You know, when you're a true fan of any kind of team or singer or anything, you got to hang in there in the lows and the highs. And may I say, the Flyers are on an all-time low, like down the basement low, like really bad. <clears throat> what are you going to do? All their chemistry players are gone. I think it's going to be the worst year ever for them. And... uh once again, the Rangers got lucky. Friggin' blue tampons. Anyway, uh, yeah, Ebomi's Blog TV Friday night. So I'll leave the link under this channel, this video. Then you guys can click the link and you can see what time it starts and all that. I forget all the times and all. I'm a horrible promoter, ain't I? Eric's probably like, this ain't helping me. Uh, it's the best I can do, Eric. I'm very lazy. You know what I'm saying? You know, Eric, you're 71. You know what a 71 is, Eric? That's a 69 with two fingers up your ass. Anyway, uh, I got these three guns here. Right now, I'm feeling these three. These are my, like my three favorite guns to shoot right now. Uh, the Sig Sauer really scared the hell out of me when I first bought it. This is the, uh, just a little gun porn today, guys. It's, uh, it's like two degrees out, so I figured I'd do a video and show off some beautiful firearms. Uh, this Sig Sauer right here is um, really uh, had me going for a minute because I was having problems when I first uh, shot it. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with 9mm. I'm kind of kind of new to the 9mm world. You know, I never really cared for 9mm, but I'm starting to really get into it. You know what really gets you into it? The price, the cheap price to shoot the 9mm. Which figures, when I start getting into them, uh, ammo prices are soaring, so now I'm not able to enjoy that cheap 9mm feeling of going to the range, shooting that round. But anyway, uh, this Sig Sauer 228 has really uh, proven itself. I think we're okay with it. Uh, it, it's eaten everything now. I got Winchester White Box through it, I got Remington UMC through it, I got um, federal ammunition through it, and it's, uh, it's just eating everything up. But we need to shoot it more to make sure it's okay. What the problem was, uh, it was a stiff recoil spring problem, so it's just a break-in issue. So if you do get one of these, and the slide fails to lock back, and you get some stove pipes, uh, break in that uh, recoil spring, lock the slide back. Uh, thank you, Bill, for that suggestion. Uh, if you don't want to do it that way, you can... Uh, just shoot it a lot, which I think is a waste of money doing it that way. So, I'm just glad it's okay because this is not a cheap gun by no means. It's just a very expensive firearm. Uh, yeah, so this is one of my favorites right now. Not because it's the new one, just because I miss having a black tactical SIG in my collection. You know, this, this is the way it should be, you know. Beautiful night sights and uh, it's a lot of fun shooting. A lot of fun. To shoot this. Um, as far as uh, another guy's, you know, I get PMs all the time, guys. I, I can't answer them all. I try to. If I don't, if I don't answer you. Don't get all ass hurt. You know what I mean? I can't help it. I just, I don't. I just can't sit here all day and do that. You know, I wouldn't be able to make videos. I wouldn't be able to make money. I wouldn't be able to do anything. Just sit here and answer comments all day. I can't do it. So I try to answer the most important ones that I think are important. Uh, or as many as I can. I've had so many damn 1911s, I'm confused now. 
which which 1911 to tell to buy to tell someone to buy. I'm always getting uh, PMs like, dude, I'm in a, I'm new to guns. I want to get a 1911. Which one should I get? Well, I've had them all. I mean, I see I've had an Ed Brown. I've had Kimbers. I've had Springfields. I've had Colts. Um, I never had a Sig Sauer 1911 yet. Not yet. Um, which other ones? I had Rock Island Armory. Uh, now I have an STI right here. Uh, this is awesome. Um, trying to think. What other one? You guys probably know what I got. I had more than better than I do. My experience is all the 1911s that I've had, the ones I always had problems with were, uh, and it's not because they're not good 1911s, I, I think it's a break in issue, is the Kimbers. You got to remember the Kimbers are made really tight and they use wolf springs so that means all the springs are really strong so you really got to put a good 500 rounds to a Kimber before you condemn it or or suggest you have a problem with it if you have a Kimber get 500 rounds through it and then start from there to decide if you have an issue with it or not I'm trying to be fair to Kimber uh, when I had Kimbers uh, I wasn't a heavy shooter I don't consider myself a heavy shooter now, but I definitely shoot a lot more than I used to. So in all fairness to Kimber, I don't think I had a Kimber that had 500 rounds through it. So before that 500 rounds, I've always had issues with Kimbers. But think, I think it's just a break-in thing. That's what I think. I don't think there's anything wrong with Kimbers. But <clears throat> I'm just done spending 1,500 hours on 1911s that, you know, it's just too much money, you know. Uh, this one is a seven. What's six fifty for this one? So I figure time done tax and all that. This is figure. Just figure this Spartan STI is a seven hundred dollar nineteen eleven, and uh, <clears throat> so far, I mean, I didn't shoot it a lot, but so far uh, I shot real well with it. It feels great when you shoot. Um, one of the things I can't stand when I shoot a nineteen eleven that's made loose is every time the slide goes back and forth, you can feel it working. Like you can feel it like clacking back and forth. I just, that is not a good feeling. It feels like the slide's gonna come back and come off the gun and smash your face in. Uh, this doesn't give you that feeling. This 1911 for $700 uh, is a really, is made nice and tight, but at the same time, obviously, it's reliable. Obviously, I don't have to, you know, get 500 rounds through it yet, but it gives you that nice tight pop. That's the STI Spartan. So here's a good suggestion that I can give you. Uh, awesome. Springfield makes a real nice 1911. Now the GIs, they're a little loose for me. They, they run good and they're reliable and uh, they're accurate, but man, they really loosen up. They really get really loose and uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't like a loose gun. Uh, six hours get a little loose too, but not as much. So as far as 1911s go, I would go with it. Save yourself the money, man. I'd go with one of these STIs, Rock Island Armory. I'd go with one of them. Uh, I'd go with a Springfield. Um, you know, you have different levels of Springfield, like a Springfield uh, Range Officer, the Springfield Loaded. Uh, the Springfield TRP, that's that's a lot of money, but it's a real sweet 1911. But, uh, you know, I'm coming to the conclusion it really doesn't matter. I've had all the brands, and they all ran good for me. So if you can find a nice 1911 and save yourself a lot of money, and it's not a Colt or it's not a Camber, don't sweat it, man. I'd go for it. Even the S, the S, what is the ATI? I looked at an ATI 1911. That thing was made real nice real nice I couldn't believe it and they're only four hundred and fifty dollars so it's just an it's it's an old gun it's been around for over a hundred years and everyone has the right specs to make it and everyone makes good ones I I never owned a power ordinance my friend has one and he claims to have like fifty thousand rounds to his that's what he says and he says he never has any problems and it's a really reliable gun he carries it every day so that's, that's what I could tell you about power ordinance no experience with one, okay? I get a lot of questions about Glock. Now this 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 uh, pistol is loaded. 
This is one of my primary carries. I carry this a lot. As a matter of fact, I will carry this today. And it is empty. This is a Gen 4. The Gen 4s have a little tricky... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A hokey reputation right now because when they first came out with them, the recoil springs were just a little too strong. And they were having problems with um, stove piping and stuff. Uh, I was one of the people. I, I had a Gen 4, and it was a nightmare. But I believed in Glock, because I know how, my, how good their guns are. I waited a while. I waited about, I don't know, six months, and I bought another one, because I knew they fixed a the problem. And here we are with uh, almost 1,200 rounds through it. Not one failure. Zero. Zero failures. This has proven to be an extremely reliable gun. I fire all kinds of ammo through it, and it just eats everything. It's a wonderful pistol. When it comes to Glocks, I always get PMs. I want to get a Glock, and I'm not sure which one to get. I would suggest a medium size frame. It's just a complete package. Uh, you get the full size frame, you can carry them, but they're big. If you get the, the compact size, you might not like where your pinky hangs off. Some people hate that. Some people just can't deal with that. They hate it. So I would go with the medium size frame. The medium size frame, to me, is the most useful of the Glock. Uh, it holds a good capacity of rounds in Pennsylvania. There's no magazines limitation at this time yet. Hopefully it stays that way. So, um, the Glock 23, the Glock 19, they are probably your best choices. I mean, that's what I would direct you to. If you ask me, hey, what Glock should I get? I would say, well, what are you using it for? And then uh, I'd say go to a 23 or a 19. You can take them to the range. You can use them for home protection. You can carry them. They are the complete package, and I love my 23, and this is probably my most used firearm in the whole safe is the Glock 23. I carry it, I shoot it, I take it to the range, I use it for home protection. I also have a Glock 21, which I would never carry. It's way too big for me to carry, and, uh, but it's a lot of fun at the range, and it's great for home protection. This covers all three, Glock 23, Gen 4, Glock 23. Awesome. I used to have a Gen 3 19 and I do miss it, but I think it's silly if I bought that. You never know what I'm going to do, but uh, this one's hanging in there. I just I just can't let go of this one. This is once you get uh, a lot of rounds to a firearm, especially like when it gets when you start to get to the thousands, it becomes like an old wallet or an old broken pair of shoes. You just can't let go of it, you know. So I think that's what's going to happen with this. I I just. I don't know. It's, it's just, it hasn't failed me. I have a lot of confidence in it. That's what. And I got upgrades in it. I have a uh, three and a half pound connector to lighten the trigger in there. I have the extended takedown tabs on here. And I have the extended uh, slide release here, which this is a good one. But the Tango Down one, some guy sent me, they are way better. I really like them. But this is the uh, Glock Meister one. And I love uh, the Gen 4. The Gen 4 magazine release. I wish they would make them all like that. Because that's the only thing I don't like about the Glocks is the magazine release because they're real pointy and they snag on your clothes and all. But if you get the Tango down, they're all rounded off or you can round it off yourself. And that's it. I, I, you know, I hope this answered some of your questions through your PMs. Uh, if you ask me if you're in the market for a Sig Sauer, like I would say, I would stick with the medium frames. I find I'm getting the most use with medium frames. Same with the 1911. The Commanders are great because this is a full size. This is a government model, 5 inch, you know, full size 1911. It's great for the range, great for home protection. You could carry it because it's slim, but it's, it's big and long. Uh, I would go with a, a Commander if you're a first time gun buyer because this way you'll get everything you need out of one gun. Carry, whatever. Uh, that's what I would do. Then later, when you're going to start a gun collection, then buy the full-size guns later. Buy a big one, uh, full-size 1911, get a, get a SIG 226 later, you know what I mean? But if, for now, if you're going to buy a gun now, I would stick with the medium-size frames. That's what I say, because you're going to get most use for it. You're going to get mo the most for your money. The more, the more use you get for it, the more you're getting for your money. That's what I say.